Have you ever wondered what goes on between that USB power supply and the USB device being powered? How many volts is it producing? How many amps is it drawing? How many watts are actually charging over that USB cable? What's the resistance of the cable? Well, there are measurement devices that you can get, and I'm going to review one right now. This one here will measure both USB-C as well as USB-A sources. It'll give you the voltage, current, watts, and it'll even give you a waveform showing you the condition of the power being transferred. Today we're going to look at this new USB tester that I received to check out. It's factory sealed, so let's just open up the, the box. And what you see is it's got multiple inputs and outputs on it. It's got a USB-A input as well as a USB-C input and USB-A and USB-C outputs. And it's got another USB up top here. That one's for updating the firmware. So it's a multifunction USB voltage and current meter as well as quick charge trigger device for mobile communication terminals and it features a, a full color ultra wide viewing angle TFT LCD display. It includes USB A and C male and female connectors ensuring broad compatibility. It's got a type C power port and then output monitoring type A and C. Does this require power? You even measure the internal cable resistance of cable using the pressure difference method. So this should be an interesting little gadget to play around with. Now this should power up when I plug this in to USB, which it does. So it does get power from its source. It's telling me that it's at 5.19 volts right now. And if I plug my phone in, we'll plug it in with the cable here. And indeed it's gone to nine volts. It's the charging voltage. Now it's kicked down to five. It tells me it's a Samsung 2 amp. And here's the actual voltage, the graph of the voltage showing any noise and fluctuations. And this is for settings. Fast charge. You can select manual. I'm going to select automatic detection. What it's doing now is it's going to look at the protocols that my phone's capable of. This phone's actually capable of QC 2.0. It's not detecting it, but it could just be the cable that I've used to connect between the meter and the phone itself because it does support 9 volts, this phone. It says it's fast charging. See, it says fast charging. And it is running at 9 volts right now. I'm going to get back out of this display According to this, it's in fast charge. Yeah, it says it's fast charging. It's charging at uh, 2.3 watts, but it's only at, at 5 volts. But there it is. Start out at 9 volts. Maybe it's going to stay there this time. Fast charging, it says, on the phone. 
that says four hours to charge on fast charge. It should be charging a lot faster than that. This little um, unit has a maximum output of um, of 12 volts. Now I do have another USB charger here that we can utilize. So let me just disconnect this one. Okay, let's plug this one in. We'll plug this one into I think it's on. Hmm. Does not appear to be doing anything. If I plug an output into this, will it detect anything? Okay, I thought about this for a second. It might require using a USB-C. It won't go from A to C and C to A. So I've got a USB cable plugged in now. I'll plug that into my phone. And sure enough, there it is. And it's, record it's charging at 8 watts now. 5 volts, still 1.6 amps. And it's charging it at, uh, at 8 watts. So my phone will charge... In an hour and 12 minutes at uh, one amp eight watts five volts now I got another I do have another USB C power source here we'll try this one and plug this one in and again it doesn't light up until I actually plug the phone in This one's charging at 10 watts, and it's gone up to 9 volts on this one. If I look at some of the, the parameters on here now, see it's charging at 9.021 volts, 1 amp, 11.5 watts, and it's telling me the triggers, DC plus 0.7 and DC, or data, plus 0.7 and, and minus 0.7 and it's giving me the amp hours and the watt hours and we can now look at the uh, the graph that's showing us I guess one's showing current and the other's showing voltage so we're seeing the current spikes and voltage up and down as it's doing its thing So that's that. You have to plug in the same on either side. You have to plug in either USB-A in to out or USB-C in to out. But here we're seeing it at 9 volts, charging 12 watts. I'm going to try the original charger that came with the phone, the original Samsung charger, and with the original cable, and we'll see what type of charge we can get measured on the little meter using the original charger. This is one I usually use with my laptop, my work laptop. I keep the original one in my truck and I carry the uh, this one. I keep this one at home to charge because it's USB-C only on my work laptop. So there we go, 10 watts. This one will, I think this will do 65. This is a 65 watt charger, this one. So it's a, it's a good size one. Yeah, it'll do 20 volts at two and a half amps. So here's my Samsung original charger. Of course, it goes to 5 volts. It should go to 9 when I plug the phone in. And there it goes to 9 volts. 11 watts. Should probably peel this stupid protective sheet off. I'm sure you're getting extra glare from it. But there we go. 9 volts. 1.1 amp. 10 watts. I'm going to do one more test. I'm going to actually plug my laptop in and see what kind of, uh, type of power I can draw from this. Now my battery is fully charged on my laptop right now, so I don't think it'll be charging the battery, but it should. If I fire the laptop up, it should change the voltage. We should see this go up to like 20 volts. So we'll just unplug the phone. I'm going to plug this charger back in and plug in the USB-C to my laptop, my work laptop, 
fire up. And there we go. It's at uh, 20 volts. Right now it's only drawing 5 watts because, again, my laptop's not really doing anything. It's fully charged. So now we can look at the, the voltages for the, on the data lines that determine what the charger is going to output. And we can look at the waveform. Even has a little bar graph down here that shows the power consumption as the power consumption and the current uh, uh, spike a bit. You'll see it showing up in the green and the blue lines. But that's pretty good. We're drawing, you know, between 20 and 30, uh, 30 watts. Varies all over the place. I think probably if I were to open up a video or something on here. Oh, look. I typed in 12V and I'm the second one on the list. 12V Cummins engine is the first, and then my channel. I'll just uh, play something. We'll Self-employed in Canada. We'll see what what the power consumption goes up to. Protect your small business with insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip. This time I have a Sony EBC100, which is a Hi8 deck, a small Hi8 deck that was shipped in. This one here is eating tapes. It won't load and unload, and all that happens is the mechanism tries to load and then tries to unload and then tries to load and tries to unload classic symptom of a mode switch which we put this on full screen to see what type of power but you can see the, the power is jumping up and down here between about 30 switch. watts so and uh, uh, and 12. and they used shipping peanuts nothing pisses me off more than these because they're going to end up all over the place. Tracking this is showing the, the scope. The oscilloscope basically built in. 1.1 1. 1 second per division. As in this is showing our current and consumption, our voltage shift. So I can go through different settings. 5 seconds per division. This is for catching things that are not changing their power consumption quickly. I guess five seconds per division is the smallest I can go. And then if I go on the negative side, I can dial it back down. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 second per division there. I can freeze it by pressing the OK button and then unfreeze it. That gives you an idea of how this little unit works. Some of the modes that can be selected is automatic detection, QC 2.0, 3.0, FPC, SCP, AFC, VOOC, or warp, and SV0 or SVOOC 1.0 and 2.0. This is uh, modes that you can manually select so you can force it to operate at different voltages. Automatic detection will detect what device you've plugged into it. And uh, quick charge 2 will support 5 through 20 volts. Quick charge 3 is 3.4 through 20 volts. FPC is 9, 12, and 20 volts. SPC 5.5 to 6 volts. So it'll detect all these different protocols that are used over USB-A and USB-C. Automatic detection will automatically determine it'll it will sequentially attempt to trigger various protocols and display the test results on the screen with red indicating unsupported protocols and green indicating supported protocols These are just some of the settings that it can measure. In the toolbox, we can check things like cable resistance. So if we plug this into the phone again, 
So for example, if we go down to cable resistance, So it's charging at 9.23 volts, and this is the, the resistance of the cable. This is a new cable, so maybe that's why it's not measuring any resistance, because there's no fault on the cable. Some cables uh, don't, like some cables aren't good. They are not very good, and they have higher resistance values. If I can try a different cable here, and we'll just see whether this other cable will measure any different. Okay, so you can see this cable here. It uh, did show some initial resistance there initially when I started the charging. It's charging 9 volts at 1 amp, but again, it's showing 0 ohms. My resistor cable, though, on the other hand, which just has some resistors put together, this is going to load this thing down. We should definitely see a load on this. Is this going to show us anything, or is it not even going to do anything? This cable might be broken. That's another possibility. The cable itself might be no good. Obviously, this is putting out power because uh, it's... Um, I have a feeling that this cable is broken. That would explain why, because there should be power on here. I don't see anything, so this, this test cable must be burned out. I can confirm that pretty quick by just uh, putting a meter across here and see if there's any voltage. None. Okay, so I burned this cable out. That's why there's no watts. My little test cable I was using for an acid test on USB stuff, I guess I burned it out. Okay, well, I guess that's uh, that pretty much does it for this little meter. There's not a heck of a lot else to show you. It certainly does give you all the readings that you could ever want to know about USB and USB-C. And it lets you select the protocols. And it can update the firmware as well. On the back here it says the specifications. So it will measure between 0 and 6.5 amps, 3.8 to 24 volts. This is a PC link mode, 0 to 24 volts. Anyway, I'm going to put a link in the description. It came from Banggood. Neat little device. I think uh, this is something that a lot of people will find is useful when you're prototyping or testing anything that deals with USB power. Something like this could be invaluable for... Uh, just showing you what's going on between that USB and the device. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.